touch base with our ivory towers this morning vital to our nation's development but over the past couple of years some would say even decades uh, the institutions have not been living up to expectations or well, they say government has not lived up to its own side of the bargain and the back and forth has been going on at the receiving end uh, students, young Nigerians, whom we always call the future of our nation. But ASU uh, has been busy of late. There's been a meeting with the minister, we understand. And while we're looking at labor as a whole, the NLC, TUC, see their next line of action regarding minimum wage. We wonder what will also come out of ASU's, I call it, negotiations or meetings with the federal government. So this morning, we thought it's important to bring you up to speed with what's going on in that sector so you're not caught unawares. We have joining us on the program this morning the president of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, Professor Emmanuel Osodeke. He joins us virtually on the program. Good morning, Prof. Welcome to the Morning Brief. Thank you. Good morning. I think we should just start from uh, that meeting uh, said to have held between the Minister of Education and uh, leadership of ASU, which, of course, you are at the helm of affairs. Speak to us uh, about what that meeting was meant to care, particularly the big question which a lot of people always ask, are we on the verge of a possible strike yet again? Thank you, Thank you very much. The meeting yesterday was between we and the Minister of Education and his team. You no, know, this government came in in May 2023, and between then and now, we have never had any formal meeting to look at the issues for which we have been on a struggle since 2009, 2009, and today. So what we met today, yes, when we met today, to look at all the issues that are involved, there are 10 of them, renegotiation of agreement, payment of a withheld salary, uh, payment of people's allowances and, and salary withheld by IPIS, payment of consequential adjustment, and most others. These were the issue we discussed with the minister yesterday, and each of the issue we will not design a way forward on how this issue can be implemented, and that, that's what we did yesterday. So, and they will put a few committee together on some of the issues, and we'll meet you soon again to look at what they have done, and then we we'll start move forward from there. So, is that um, a no to that question? if we're on the verge of another strike. Because I remember in May, uh, ASU released a statement that well, got a lot of people worried. Well, the word strike was not used in that statement, uh, but ASU said, we're gonna take action. So is this uh, trying to curb ASU from taking that action? Is that a possibility? Is there a time frame that you're giving to government on this? So we all know what to expect, Prof. Well, like I said, the process of reaching an agreement, it does not have that done one day. Because for my members, they want to do some action taking. The payment of with 33 and a half small salary has it been paid. The pay distorted by IPPIS has they been restored. In academic allowance that have been there for a long time has it been paid. When is government signing the agreement we reach with Nimi Bridge Committee? So we, these are the things we discussed with the minister yesterday. And you also know that he's also uh, was not part of that that period. So we agree with they should take time, look at it, implement those they can implement immediately, and then we'll meet in the next uh, four weeks to now see what they have implemented and then we'll brief but from this one we'll not brief our member appropriately and then they can advise us what to do next. As we, as union, normally do, decisions are taken from up down. We don't, we don't impose the decision on our members. So we we'll go to our members; they will advise us on what to do next. So I imagine for a lot of Nigerians, they're trying to compartmentalize uh, what ASU is doing, and then what the NLC, the TUC, called organized labor, what they are doing as well. So is this uh, unrelated? Is there a relationship between this? I know that ASU has spoken about what the TUC and NLC are fighting for, but how do we properly compartmentalize this uh, such that people know, again, what is going on? Uh, looks like uh, the connection is frozen. 
uh, yet again. But it's important really to speak to these things. We know how important our tertiary institutions are. In that statement that ASU put out last, last month in May, it spoke about how, how we have up to 200 uh, or thereabouts. Uh, and what we've seen from those public institutions are underwhelming, to say the least. Uh, so it's important to understand what ASU is fighting for this time around vis-a-vis -vis what the NLC and TUC, uh, what they are fighting for as well. So we'll try to reconnect with Professor Emmanuel Osodeke. They had a meeting with the Minister of Education and his team uh, yesterday. So he says, well, from what it appears right now, there is no strike or action in the offing because there's been a time frame to that effect. So students uh, watching right now can at least heave a sigh of relief albeit for four weeks to see what is going on. So as we try to reconnect uh, with Professor Emmanuel Sodeke, uh, there you see those demands that ASU is making uh, of government establishment, or rather the evaluation and signing of the renegotiated agreement uh, between the parties, that's ASU and the government, earned academic allowance. Uh, UTAS is actually there. Again, you understand what IPIS did, or at least the unresolved issues with IPIS. And, of course, uh, there are other issues on that. Mm. And there's this. also, Kadi, funding for the revitalization of public universities, which is very important because ASO has spoken time and again about the poor state of infrastructure in uh, public tertiary um, institutions. And, you know, that speaks to the role of TETFON, the Tertiary uh, Education Trust Fund, uh, which is, um, you know, um, set up to bridge the infrastructure gap in Nigeria's public tertiary education system. Uh, so you would wonder, um, you know, where's the justification for the huge sums of money that has been allocated to those, um, to, to, to that, that fund, and um, why we still have non-functional laboratories in Nigerian uh, public tertiary education institutions. And uh, how well, indeed, uh, is the leadership of the union um, or maybe the leadership of the institutions now working with TED Fund to ensure some form of accountability and the, the proper uh, distribution of the funds to uh, public tertiary institutions that should be receiving those funds. So those issues are very critical and we hope that we get um, the president back to be able to speak to some of these issues. Absolutely. So uh, there were other issues as well. If we can put it up yet again at some point, uh, the proliferation of universities. Uh, literally, there are so many people getting licenses uh, from individuals to maybe faith-based organizations to other people trying to get licenses, just like we have <laughs> with the radio and television. Uh, I don't know what the standard, the minimum standard should be for someone to start a university, but ASU apparently is quite uncomfortable. Uh, with that position. They're in their position, I think, they are trying to say, look, rather than the multiplicity of this university mm -hmm. uh, and all of that, what should be is the quality uh, of this university in terms of infrastructure, in terms of all the things that is needed to run a proper institution. Uh, some of the things we deal with, universities can resolve it, but our universities are not, quote and unquote, well positioned uh, to do the best they can to add to development of society just besides just churning out graduates every other year. Research is a major, major, major part of uh, setting up an institution. In fact, at a, at a certain level as a lecturer, uh, you should focus more on research than even lecturing because of the need of uh, different sectors of the economy for what your expertise are uh, or is, or expertise is in that particular field. But we see a situation where we've seen uh, what they call publish or perish, people just do it just for promotion, uh, inadequate uh, resources in terms of financial resources, in terms of infrastructural resources. So perhaps it's why ASU is making all of these calls and which the federal government has to you know, pay attention to. Guys, I was just looking at the, not the time. Yeah. 2009 to 2024, uh, Bukola and uh, Kaede, it's 15 years or so. I, the, one of the questions that I want to ask... Uh, a child before, born at that time by yes, Louis Jeffrey is due for it, the university it, in another three years. Some have even graduated the way, uh, or planning to graduate. You know, these ones, they, they just they skip classes these no, days. You shouldn't graduate <laughs> university at 15. Was, That's an anomaly. Some people, I know it's not, the right Sheldon, thing. Uh, mm -hmm. it's not the right thing, but we see those scenario play out. People yeah. graduate at 16, 17. Mm -hmm. 
So it's not far from it. So, and every time ASU comes out with this protest and all of this, it really hasn't worked. Mm. So I, I don't know what they will do differently. Whether they would graduate the, or scale, I, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> I'm trying to look for the word now, to see, okay, maybe we need, say, two trillion for, for, to, to cover their bill. Yeah. Uh, can we spread it in five years? They, they negotiated that at some point, but different governments failed. I think the Buhari government at some point tried, uh, but couldn't meet up at some point. Uh, the Jonathan government started off and left it off at some point. So finance is a major, major part. Our budget is in deficit, by the way, of almost 10 trillion naira. Mm -hmm. So everywhere we look, it's almost like a very, very hard situation. So perhaps it's a situation to sit down with government and like what they've done. How far can you go? Because if you don't go that far, we will hit the streets. Again, I, I just want to latch on to that point you made about the, would, it, would they call it proliferation of universities? For some, it's pro proliferation. For some, it's we need a lot more universities. Mm. All of the public universities cannot take in, uh, you know, the graduates, secondary school graduates, right, or the school sets holders. So you need more schools to ab absorb them. But the challenge of ASU, what ASU is saying, if we have almost 200 public and private, they say about 79 plus is private owned, while 40, 40 plus, 40 plus is for state and federal. ASU is saying that you find out that politicians are now bidding to get licenses for themselves. And you can just imagine what that scenario uh, will bring up. But we understand that um, Professor Sodeke is back with us uh, right now. Uh, Prof. We lost you momentarily or for quite some time. Good to have you back. Uh, and the question, you, the question we were putting across to you is trying to compartmentalize uh, what ASU is doing with what the NLC and TUC are doing as well. Because I remember in that statement which you put out in May, you had spoken about the minimum wage and how the federal government needs to sit up and do something decisive. You gave a two-week ultimatum that you're going to take decisive action if some of those issues you raised uh, were not resolved. That was in May. Uh, so speak to us. How do we compartmentalize what ASU is doing and what NLC and TUC are doing right now? Thank you very much. There is no relationship between the two. NAC is on the struggle to get a living wage or a living, that is minimum wage for Nigerian workers. Which, which level do you not, no, don't have to go below for all Nigerian workers in the public and private sectors? And we are an affiliate of NSC and we are, we are with them on that also. We are with them on that. So when they had one wage strike, we also joined because we are part of Nigerian labor, NLC. But for us, we are talking about the academia, the university. Like I like keep on saying, is the environment for teaching and learning good in Nigerian universities? If it is good, you don't need to be told. You see foreigners coming to Nigeria as students. You see foreign lecturers coming to Nigeria to lecture, as you have in the 1670s and 80s and early 90s. Or just like when you go to every, any country in Nigeria, in the world today, you see a Nigerian man lecturing, Nigerian lecturer teaching. But you don't see any people coming from outside to Nigeria. The reason being that they are better catered for in those areas compared to what you have here. In Nigeria today, a professor goes home with between 300 and 350,000 dollars a month. Between 300 and 350 dollars a month. The same professor in Nigeria, he goes to other countries, to South Africa, he earns about 5,000 dollars. So those are the reasons why we are on strike. Let's bring our university to universal. A university universal, the same university you have all over the world. BSc in Nigeria should be a BSc in England, should be a BSc in China, BSc in Russia. There is no difference. And that is why we are doing this struggle. To we'll bring our university to a par with university in Ghana, the Nigerians are flooding to, even being a republic, because the condition of our universities have deteriorated, which we also, the government agreed with us in 2012, when the report of the need assessment report was presented to then President Gula Jonathan, and we found out that the universities are so dilapidated. In the university stove was being used as bouncing burner. Students sitting in the bare floor to have lectures, which should not be good for the general of Africa. That's why we'll be struggling. We'll bring that power. It is because of this, and in fact, any political office holder, whether you are a minister, you are a governor, you are a president, you are a legislator, once you enter the office and have access to this public fund, they send their children abroad. But we want them to come back to this country. You don't see the children of this people in this country. That's why they are not bothered about what happened in the university. Because their children are now here. 
I'm so sure if the president of all Nigerian political officials told that those who control our economy, from the president down to the governor, if their children are in Nigerian universities, they will not treat us the way they are treating the Nigerian university today. That's that's where we are. So we want to with Nigerians to do like the, the, the Kenyans are doing, ensure that our leaders bring their children back home. Let them attend this university and see what will happen. Uh, uh, Prof, maybe the also through other people may have to put up a bill and suggest to the National Assembly, let's see how that plays out, because you have a strong point there that if it concerns them, maybe they will do something. But my question is, uh, from our calculation, this is 2024, uh, from 1999 till 2024, I think ASO has gone on about 16 or so uh, strikes, which in terms of days, I uh, calculate it in terms of days, comes over four years of this 24 or 25 years, four years of students being at home and lecturers not going to class, insisting and demanding for one thing or the other. But after that number of years of not being in class and after 25 years of our democracy, this is where we are. Where, where, where do you think this move you're making will actually make a difference? Thank you very much. If not for these our struggles you have just mentioned, if not for these struggles of us, we will not have public university today. Go around this country. You don't, do you still have public primary and secondary schools? When you go around all the universities you have today, Polytechnic College of Education, all the projects you see there carry the name TED Fund or need assessment project, need assessment. That's what you see. And they are the product of the struggle of this 1999 and today like, like you talked about. If not for that, we will not have it. Today, 95% of Nigerian students are still in the public universities because of our struggle. Any day we give up like others, this, our public university will be gone. So those periods you have talked about, we have made a lot of gain for Nigerian universities. Any governor today that established a university is eyeing church fund as a source of funding. Federal government established a university like it was done in the same university in the same day, they are all funded by church fund, which is our product. If we didn't do that, we would not have it today. So we are very proud of our struggle. And everybody, enter any university today, you'll be proud that, that academics that have fought for this country. So that is what we have done. But the struggle is still not over yet. If they have implemented all those things we agreed on, we will not be where we are today. But like I said, they are not interested. Because their children are not here. Their relations are not here. So we are proud. But let me also tell you, four years, yes, if you calculate 1990 today, the number of months and years I should have gone on, on vacation, as it was in the 70s and 80s, is more than the four years. So I've sacrificed my vacation, my holiday, for this, for this, uh, for this nation. So I have also, it's more than the four years. So the, we, when we are talking about four-year strike, we have also come back and sacrificed our leave, our, holy, our, our vacation, as we used to have in those days, to ensure that we have a good system. But the government has to also do its part. And I will tell you why. Where we are today, our universities. When you take the average budgetary allocation to education in West Africa, the least country, apart from Nigeria, is 15%. But we give between 4 and 7%. The giants of Africa give between 4 and 7%. But others give, give between 15 and 20 and 30%. So that is where we are today. But let me tell you, we're getting, we're getting worse. Because as of today, University of Lagos spent almost between 200, 280 million naira to 300 million naira every month now on the new electric, electricity bill. Uniben is the same thing. This federal you, you, you uh, Ibadan, ABU, they are all the same thing. How much do they get from the government as a running cost? You, you, you are, uh, you, you need to get less than 50 million a month. Your electricity, electricity bill, not diesel, 280 million. So they will shut down. When you go to Mount there's no more light. But they cannot afford it. So it's even getting worse. And we hope that this government will step in and let resolve this issue. In the only country that looked down on its education, that country is creating room for crisis. And that's where we are today. Before these young men and women doing all sorts of things you see today, we're well educated, have access to jobs, we we'll don't have the crisis that we have as a nation today. So we must look at our education. Uh, Prof, you've, you, you've spoken um, significantly about the intervention of TED Fund, which I'd like to follow up on. But let's quickly uh, touch on the disposition of the 
federal government uh, to your demands. Uh, speaking of which, I'm, I'm trying to ask what you perceive in terms of reading the room. We know that in the last administration, there was really no lo love lost between uh, the leadership of ASU and the former minister of labor. But what are you perceiving now in your interactions with um, uh, representatives of the federal government, particularly after your meeting with the Minister of Education uh, this time around? Does it look uh, good? Does it speak of um, you know, a quick resolution to uh, some of the demands of ASU? Maybe not all. Well, thank you very much. The problem we had with the last regime was with one person. One person created all the problem. And that then Minister of Labor, Dr. Chris Sigige. Who, while we are still the Minister of Education, he went and hijacked the process and do all sorts of things. And that's what we got there. But this one, we met with him yesterday. Like I said, we had a good discussion. But for us in ASU, until we start seeing action, that is when we can appropriately assess such a person. But we are not seeing action. Once we start seeing action from what we discussed today, when we meet him, we start seeing action where we are now be able to assess that person and see whether it's in support of our struggles for a better education system or not. So we need, we need to wait. We have talked. It was, it was a good discussion, friendly discussion, but we need to see action. All right. So you've attributed uh, the preservation of some aspects of tertiary education um, in Nigeria to the role of TET fund. But still, uh, there are challenges with infrastructure in most public universities. And uh, relating to that, there's been allegations against TET fund uh, that it allocated two billion naira to spurious uh, contractors. I'd like you to speak to this. Uh, how effective has this uh, fund uh, been in intervening in the area of the infra infrastructure deficit in public uh, tertiary education system? Well, thank, thank you very much. TET fund was created as an intervention fund, not a major source of funding. The university belongs to the federal government, and that government is able to fund them, and state government will fund their own state. But it's it, it, it's also been an intervention pro, uh, project. But I agree with you, and we agree, and we are working that with the new years that there are there are in, there are how do I put it? People who want to have access to that money from us from the political circle, from the bureaucratic circle, there are people who want to have access to the money at all costs, and we are also struggling with that. We are, want to create, they should create a structure that we have for the need assessment fund where the stakeholders will be involved in the process of how the money is allocated, how it is spent openly, and how the project and monitor that project, how it moves. And what do I mean by this? That at university and polytechnic college college level, there should be stakeholder meeting before we assess what you want to do with the fund. And the stakeholder will include the university community, the, the, the deans, the HODs, the, you are the unions on campuses, including student union, because it's, it's part of their, this thing, to be part of this team that we meet to say, we should use this fund for X, Y, Z. Now, in some cases, you see today, somebody comes from the from uh, the third fund and say, I have a project for you, and I'm going to be the contractor. We want an open project. Or is it a situation where you do a public, uh, public enterprise, we just say we are giving a um, certificate of no objection. That should not be the way. Every university government council should be allowed to run their project with the stakeholders involved. So that, that, that's the work we are struggling for as part of this our struggle. Well, on a final note, Prof, the university governing councils, uh, we've seen some new appointments. And I just want to know, I imagine this came up in that meeting with the Minister of Education. Are you now okay uh, with the governing councils as they are? Well, we are not okay with it. But what we are, what we are, we are initiating now is that in all our universities, we are going to ask our members there to examine those who have been appointed, look at those who are not qualified, and those who have issues, and then we can come together and send it to the minister so that they can take action. Uh, we, we are having some issues already in many of the, in many of the, in some of the universities. Where, for example, you are appointing people who are raw politicians, people who contested governorship and failed, people who are as commissioner, as a senator, as governor, and as as member of governing council. <laughs> we believe that is detrimental to the university. But they will look at this as a political appointment. But 
member of council of university, there are no political appointment. So if, for example, if you are a chairman of a council, you are going to a meeting, you are going alone. Nobody will fund any other person. But when you put the governor, who are a former governor at it, when you're coming for such meeting as usual, you want to come with electoral That will put stress on the universities. So, you uh, and so forth and so on too. You pay them because what you pay a governing council is just sitting allowance. Which is a, which is a pit, pit penalty for acquisition of the position and consign. So they want to come in, they want to put pressure. So we believe that people who will give to the universities, people who have idea of how they can generate funds to run universities, those are the people who are thinking to be a council, not as, uh, what do you call it, uh, honorable this, honorable that, and what have you. We didn't want to see all those honorable and what in the, in the, in the distance. But that's what you have found. But we all do the turn to and we discussed that yesterday and we agree on the way forward. Because, I mean, looking at that list, you see uh, former interim national chairman of APC, B.C. Akonde, Wale Olani yes. Kukun, Isa Yuguda, former governor of Bauchi, uh, and, and the rest. You even find Adebayo Shitsu on that list. So uh, we'll see how this pans out. Uh, but we'll have to thank you so much. And I think we also need to pay attention to the students as well. Uh, some of them are not even seeing why they should be in school in the first place. But we'll have to thank you. Uh, so much, Professor Emmanuel Osedeke, uh, who is the head Thank of the Academic Staff Union of Universities. Thank you for your time. We wish you the very best. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to break now, and when we return, the floods are here, and they are impacting lives, families. There is a particular state in the nation's capital that has been sort of declared a disaster zone. It's like a yearly scenario for them. But what is the situation of things, and by extension, where you are right now? Stay with us right here on The Morning Brief.